have to adjust my speaker a little bit, my uh, microphone uh, a little bit. So anyway, um, like I said, fifty dollars. Uh, that and there's I counted it. There's thirty eight cells in this battery pack. Now this is a Gen One, like I said. Um, several things to know about the Gen Ones. One, they don't have each of the cells doesn't have that metal plate on each side. Right? They were just plastic in the old days, right? Um, 2001, 2, and 3. So those three years was Gen 1. Um, so anyway, um, the way this works, it's not liquid-cooled like the Tesla batteries are. They have a, a rubber tube. There's a blower that attaches to the one side, and this is a rubber tube, and it feeds air down into the cell and it, it exhausts it out. So it's air cooled, right? These are all for the one, the every other one, and then this one back here covers all the other ones. So um, I can hook up a regular uh, CPU fan to it later when I get around to it. Um, but my main goal right now is to tear this thing down deconstruct it, and get all the cells loose. And then I'm going to recondition each cell manually, and then I'm going to configure it as, as to what type of voltage I'm going to be using on my particular solar uh, setup. Now, there's yeah, several different ways you can set it up. 12 volts, 24 volts, or 48 volts. Now, as I'm reading online and several different articles and other YouTube videos about um, 12 and 24 volts are pretty standard for most operations, like um, just going into an inverter and then just getting a regular single phase 120 out. Um, I want this to power my house, so I need not only 120, but I need split phase. I need the 240. So I need a, a little bit more, uh, uh, the inverter's got to be a little bit more husky to, to, to do this, all right? So I think, but I've been looking around. Um, here in the States, they want, you know, $500 to $800 for those kinds of inverters. Um, I want to get the all-in-one inverter charger, so that charges the battery as well, too. So, I mean, they... You can get them into eleven hundred dollars, twelve, fifteen hundred dollars. I don't want to go that high. This is a very basic system for me. I only have one panel for a hundred watt solar, and I'm going to add maybe four or five more two hundred and fifty watt uh, panels to the system. So it's going to be about one kilowatts, one and a half kilowatts, somewhere in that neighborhood. So I don't really need to overbuild everything. I'm just starting off. I'm just cobbling some things together. Um, I've got a Harbor Freight Thunderbolt solar kit, 100 watt panel, and it converts to charging either a, a single 12 volt battery or, or two 12 volt batteries, you know, either, uh, well, in single, it puts out 12 volts. Um, but I'll tell you what, I've had my Thunderbolt kit for a couple of years. I bought it in anticipating that I was going to put it on my RV. Um, this is the charger that it comes with. And lo and behold, I take it out of the box, brand new, pop it out of the little Ziploc bag, and hook it up to my panels, and it don't work. I mean, it works. It's halfway working. Um, I measure, I get 25 volts off my panels, which is great, um, but the output, there's, there's, no, there's no output for the loads. Uh, my battery, it only measures like 2.5 volts, 3 volts, something like that. That's not going to charge a battery. It might trickle charge them, but not at the correct voltage. So that was bad. My, uh, the button that turns on the panel, the LCD panel for viewing the, the voltages and stuff like that didn't work didn't work the other button that turns on the loads for the lights didn't work so 
Yeah, I hooked the lights up to a regular battery and they, they come on, so it's not the lights. This thing is half dead. And then, of course, you know, I put in a trouble report or whatever, you know, I asked them if they could replace this. And they said, oh, you're well past your warranty, your 90-day warranty. I said, yes, I know that. But it don't work. Fresh out of the bag, they didn't, they didn't want to do anything about it. So anyway, so I'll have to buy another one anyway. But that gives me an opportunity, right? I always look at everything as an opportunity. I'm, I'm one of those half-full kind of guys. So um, then I was tickled pink when I came across this. I just I was looking for a regular battery to put in my other car, you know, because the other the other battery was dying or died, and so I I asked the guy, hey, well, I'd been kind of thinking about battery packs for a, a Tesla wall, power wall, whatever, you know, um, even as much as buying one of those Tesla battery packs you know the, uh, they're 24 volts which would have been you know about the right size um, and they're five kilowatts 5.2 kilowatts now this all together is a little over two kilowatts you know because it's a little bit small I don't know it's, it's older technology right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like I said, manually recondition every one of these after I get it completely torn apart. So this first segment, this first video that I'm making for you today is going to be the disassembly of all of this. Now it only uses basically two types of um, nut sizes. Um, eight, all of these, as you can see here, uh, these are eights and um, the ones on the bottom, all the ones on the bottom are eights as well. And then the, the four big bolts that hold the whole pack together, those are twelves. Yeah, I think so. Twelve. No, elevens. Oh, I'm sorry, elevens. Um, so anyway, um, this particular pack, like I said, was abused. Uh, all the tins are all bent in, busted up. And the, the top one was missing. Um... All of this, um, all this stuff in the side here has all been crunched together. It's been kicked around, you know. It's been rode hard and put away wet. You know what I mean? Um, I pull this down. This shows you how the pack is put together. These two big cables that go in here kind of start the pack here, goes all the way around, and comes back, and it puts them all in series. So all of these together, now, real briefly, each of these packs, uh, brand new, are 7.2 volts. Now, Gen 2, Gen 3, they get into 7.7 .7 volts and 8.2 or 8.3 volts. So they, they change the, the chemistry of the battery slightly, or they make them a lot stronger in later ones. Now, in other Gens, they talk about 28 cells, 28 cells. Everywhere they talk on the internet, 28 cells. And I'm looking at this thing and said, that's not 28. I count them. I got 38. I don't know what the deal is. 38. Uh, doesn't really matter to me. You know, I mean, you can pick up these cell modules for cheap on eBay or whatever, you know. Um, buy them in bundles or buy a recondition pack or whatever. So... I'm going to get rid of all this miscellaneous stuff. All I'm going to do is work with the packs. Um, I'm going to configure them. Now, here's here's my thought. I'm going to configure them into a 12-volt system. My inverter will be fairly inexpensive. Or what I could do is that, like I was saying earlier, they get into the 48 volts packs for homes, right? If you've got split phase and you need the 240 volts and you need a bigger system, two, three, four, five kilowatt system, then 48 is a better way to go because then the the wire sizes are, you can go with a slightly smaller wire size. Now I have a big roll of six aught, not six aught, but six gauge, right? Six gauge that I'm going to hook my batteries up with. So I will be connecting them with that. And these, as you can see right here, 
these um well you can't see the size by with the video here but they're they're roughly about six gauge or slightly smaller I don't know um, close to so I don't I don't have a problem I'm going to be connecting them into like half of this is going to be one brick and the other half is going to be another brick or module if you want to call it that um, I'm going to hook them up two cells in series for now just for now that gives me 7.2 7.2 is 14.4 now an alternator in your car charges at 14.4 volts right but that's for lead acid these are nickel metal hydride these are a lithium product okay and so 14.4 is a little bit strong but see this is old they're they're used they're abused they're they're probably barely I if I recondition them I'll probably barely get them up to seven volts so they're only talking 14 uh, volts total for in the two in series and then you parallel all those ones together um, the way these are attached it's plus minus plus minus plus minus so they're they all like this and then the the way they're attached you've got bus bar a bus bar a bus bar that attaches every two now I might recondition I might reuse these bus bars um, in a way that it'll do exactly how I want to set it up um, two in parallel I mean two in series and then the rest of them in uh, parallel you know uh, and then later um, depending on how I get whatever in inverter I get if I get a 48 volt inverter um, then I can reconfigure these uh, seven of these packs together this is the beauty of it so I, if you do four four times seven is 28 that's too much for a 25 volt 24 volt pack and three of them is 21 almost 22 volts which is too low see that's that's the problem two and two in series is 14 volts roughly in the ballpark and you can you can fudge uh, a 12 volt system okay your charger charger inverter if you get an all-in-one right um, has to be able to recognize that it's lithium right a nickel metal hydride battery type and um, charge it accordingly and there's plus and minuses you know the, the, the charging but you got to get the chemistry right now nickel metal hydride is hard to work with because the charging specifications are very specific you could see on other lithium you charge them and you continuously charge and it comes down to a volt I mean to a to a float charge um, if you're not using it like when you if it's in a vehicle and you're going down the road or something like that um, nickel metal hydride doesn't like that you know, as soon as you charge it you got to back off the very second you get it up to voltage you got to back off and wait a few seconds you know 10 20 30 seconds and then you hit it again for a second time and that's it then it comes down to float um, and then you got to get the float voltage is right right so on a nickel metal hydrides you know in the neighborhood of 14 volts you know or or 13.8 in some of the neighborhood right these will work just fine all beat up and used like they are they won't mind because they're made to be in a car for the entire life 10 or 20 years right some of them will go bad so and you, you, all the movies and all the videos on YouTube shows how to take these apart and change the specific one that is bad you, you measure across plus and minus and if it's not coming up to 7.2 there's your problem right so but you have to disconnect every single one of them right I mean with the car you've got the software that tells you which pair are bad right so you go to that pair now in this particular type of pack gen one uh, number one is on the far side and all your 
instrumentation and all your heavy duty thing, your contactors, um, are on this side of the pack. So number one is over there. Um, I watched several people on YouTube and they, um, they said their number seven was bad, so they had to come out seven. Well, they, they, they started doing it the wrong way and then, of course, um, they get confused and say it didn't fix their problem, then they had to come back from the other way. That's how we learn. That's number one down there, even though it's not marked anywhere. Now, if you take a look at this one, it's all rusted, right? It's all, look at these things, they're all corroded. Now look at that. That's green, right? If you can see that, that's corrosion. These are all corroded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the old vinegar and salt routine. Put them in a big bucket, vinegar and salt, and they'll, the all the rust will percolate off of them, right? And then I'll I'll touch them up. Um, I'll, I'll sand them lightly with a fine sandpaper or whatever, you know, and make them look pretty. It's copper. It's solid copper. So you know what bright copper looks like. It's very easy. So I'll get those all conditioned. That's what we're doing, basically, for this first movie. Get them conditioned. Um, and then, like I said, most of this hardware we don't really care about. Here's my temperature sensors for the battery pack. Um, technically, it would be nice if I had a BMS. Um, and that's what these are basically used for. I've got them if I need them. Um, I will think about maybe... Oh, I'll save this harness and I'll think about... Um, you know, probably trying to install them somehow into, because they are, you know, later in my battery pack. Um, now you got number one down, you got, you got a sensor down there, you got a sensor right here at midpoint of the battery, then you got another one right here, about two thirds, three quarters, and then you got one on the end here. Now the reason why these are closer together over here is because the air comes in down there. That stays cooler, and then by the time the air gets up to here, it's slightly warmer. So they want to make sure that they have a better look at what's going on down here, downstream, with the uh, the cooling efficiency. So anyway, uh, let me get to it. Like I said, uh, the rest of this video is just basically going. I'll probably speed it all up. Um, there's a million screws. There's one screw on the front and one screw on the back for each one of these so 38 times 2 you're 70 80 82 screws on the dot bottom and then you got one per pack 38 30, another 80 so there's 160 170 screws just there and then i gotta take all this other miscellaneous off of the pack so um i hope you enjoy uh, uh, enjoy viewing the rest of this video like i said i'm going to speed it up and then i'll come back and let you know uh, for all of you that have just joined my, my new uh, series, um, we're going to be putting this back together and configuring it to a, a battery bank for the house. Now, um, just to let you know right now, uh, I, I'm just beginning this new channel and so I'm in the process of growing it. And uh, I would appreciate everybody if they, you know, hit a like. And subscribe and uh, hit the bell for notifications of my next ones that that uh, that I produce my next videos. So uh, I love to see you come back. This would be great. Um, this is something that you don't see on YouTube is configure it or reconfiguring this as a battery pack for the house. Everybody fixes these things and they repair them and they stick it back into the cars. But I see a lot of people, they talk about configuring other battery types, like Nissan Leaf batteries or Tesla batteries, you know, like that. But I don't see anybody configuring Prius battery packs into a power pack for the home. So hopefully I'll have something unique to show you guys. All right? So we'll get to it. <clears throat> Like I said, welcome to the channel, and we're going to start ripping this thing all the way down. Now, normally you have to be careful with the battery packs. Now, here's my disclaimer. Don't do this if you're unsure about what you're doing. I've had electronics for 40 plus years. Now, once you get down to the individual cell, they're not going to hurt you. But 
in this configuration, there is a potential to get a shock. If you hook up the wrong, if you hook your fingers up to the wrong points, you could hurt yourself. Now I've measured over here off the hot bar, you know, the, the, the higher settings, and I'm only getting 30 volts. And that's the borderline for voltage when it comes to um, getting hurt. So, but I'll be careful. I know what I'm doing. Taking screws out individually is not going to hurt me. But I have to be cognizant and you have to be careful um, that you're not touching any more than one thing at a time. Right? You can wear your rubber gloves. I, you know, I highly encourage that. But I've worked in electronics most of my life, and I've been bit a few times. Oh, hell yes. I've been bit a couple of times. Even working with household voltage, 120 volts, I, I bit myself a couple of times. And it's not fun. It's not fun. It'll it'll wake the hell out of you. So that, that's my disclaimer, though. So um, please be safe. So here we go. Um, like I said, I'm going to do the rest of this. I'm just going to rip it all down, put them all in a big bucket. Okay? All right. Hundred and twenty five amps. Nice. Okay, here's an update. Um, basically, I just got this whole thing torn completely apart. So um, it was extremely dirty and extremely rusty um, for all the contacts and stuff like that. So um, I had to go, uh, you know, wipe my hands off. It was so funny. A few things that I learned is that the sensors on top is some kind of a ten temperature sensor. And then all along the back side, uh, for every pair of cells, there is a, uh, the BMS is hooked to it. So there's a big connector on the, the end of it here for the BMS. Now let me show you here. Basically, this thing here is the BMS. I'll have to see how that works. I might reintroduce that to my new packs. And then, of course, there was a the big orange connector on the back here. And then it ran all the way across the bottom. Whoa, don't get too dizzy. Anyway, this thing ran all the way across the back side. And as you can see, for every other unit here, and then, of course, in between every these is um, some of these jumpers, right? Look at these jumpers. Look how rusted and corroded those are. That is just nasty. I put them all in a big bucket. I'm going to do the old vinegar and salt routine and shake them up every now and then. But this, um, like I said, this whole back thing, there's the plug. It... Uh, that's my BMS. So I, I'm going to see if I can reuse that. Now here on the back is the negative wire from one end of the pack and then connected to the other end was this guy. That's the positive. See, it's even got red tape on it. That's the positive end of the pack. Had I measured that, I didn't, but had I measured that, I would have got a total battery voltage. So, here we are. I've taken two off the back side right here. They're, they come off in pairs, and they, they seem to be glued together. They got a little bit of a glue in between. See that? Stuck. Anyway, so they come off basically in pairs. I've got them down there, and I'm going to measure. I'm going to measure every one of these things and, and see. See, I, I took the two bolts, actually the four bolts off this end, got the end cap off. It popped right off. And so 
they're all loose now. They're all loose. You got all the bolts out of the bottom, and they're all going to come out. Now, the problem that I ran into was that I couldn't see how to get into these four bolts in here because this side, this end piece, get my camera lined up here, this end piece is spot welded to this bottom piece. Even though, and then there's spot welded, I can see some spot weld on the end cap. So I'm going to have to break these spot weld to get those off so I can get the rest of this off of here. I mean, it's not really, well, it's not really necessary. If I don't want to use this bolt pipe, then what I could do is take all thread and uh, use that or something like that. Um, keeping in mind the distance that they're using here and they're away from any contacts. These are air holes. These are ten temperature sensor uh, things that they can, a lot of them are not used. Like I said, there's only four places on the battery pack that showed how to use that. So anyway, it came all the way apart. I can't use any of that rest of that stuff on the battery, the, the casing or anything like that. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to re recondition all of my cells and we're going to uh, get them all up to snuff and then start assembling them. That will be another video. Okay, that's uh, Pretty good for now. Uh, let me leave you with some uh, some parting thoughts. Um, here I am again in the video. Whoops, the wrong direction. So we, like I said, you and me, we're going to go through this little journey here. We're going to get us a battery pack. We can configure it in any way we want. So, whew. that was. Um, there was a lot of screws. My God. Like I was saying earlier, 180, 200 screws. I don't know, plus a few more. Man, that was a lot of screws. So we are going to go through this journey together, and uh, hopefully you, uh, you'll learn a few things. Um, I hate to divulge this, but like I said, you can pick these up for cheap. And just like 18650 shells, you um, you can assemble them and, and and then make battery packs and do all kinds of neat stuff with these things. So, all right. So, anyway, I'm just having fun swinging around here, just enjoying myself. So, I like these videos. I like to be educational. And um, together we're going to learn some things. So, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, come back and see how we're doing. Uh, like I said, uh, hit the like. Subscribe and hit the bell for notifications if you want to see the rest of this build. Uh, bye for now. We'll, we'll catch you up later.